Thanks for watching the SA Sports Show. We're going to have a look at the SA NFL because uh, not too long ago, two rounds to go, Couple mate. Rounds. The finals are heating up. There's a couple of teams that can't, mm, could or might miss out. We don't know. So we thought we'd go to an expert, one of the journos at the SA NFL, Luke Marchioro. Joins us. Luke, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Mate, we're having a bit of a chat off air how it's playing out. You're saying there's a split round coming up this weekend. So with the way the lockdown and everything happened is the SA NFL had a split round fixtured in and they've honoured that in their fixture coming up. So... This weekend, both the AFL affiliated sides will play and then uh, the rest of the competition will have a bye and then that'll flip next weekend. Mate, we'll go through the teams in a minute and where they're placed, but mm. you know, the Crows are going to be out of it. Port could be in lockdown over in Perth. Does that, is that going to impact, do you think, in the last couple of games? Potentially it could. I think a lot of their season will be out of the way and the fact is both teams are well and truly out of the running for the finals now. Uh, Port lost to Sturt last weekend, which pretty much put an end to their finals hopes, and the Crows have been out of it for a long time. So I don't think it'll have too much of an impact on the finals. Um, um, the top six have been fantastic for most of the second half of the year, and that's where the action sits. Could Sturt sneak into that spot above Norwood, mate? Or do you think they've got So Norwood's last two games were against North and Adelaide, so we'd assume they win the one against Adelaide. The one against North could go the, either way? The North game is the one. North are probably the form team in the competition outside Glenelg. They've won eight of their last nine. They've won six on the bounce. And they've just started to get their full team back. Billy Hartung played on the weekend for the, just the second time this season. and mm. He's a really important cog Very in their important. way that they go about it. So what about Sturt then, mate? They're, uh, they've got the Eagles and North. Could they squeeze a win? Because they've got the better percentage. It's going to be tough. I mean, they, are, they aren't playing good footy, but both of those teams are, need to win at least one game to play for the double chance. So. Pretty young side too, Luke. They're, and they are. Uh, yep. you know, they're, they've done really well. Mick he's done a good job of them. Yeah, he's yeah, done, done a really good job. job. Mid-season, you would have thought they might not win a game. They lost Ash Johnson and Jed McEntee in the mid-season yes. draft. Zane Kirkwood retired. Mark Evans retired. So mm. Marty Matten has done a fantastic job. He's just proving his credentials again as a coach. Like you say, mate, that's a tough draw. For Sturt it's, to get it's in, it's very difficult, you know, to, yeah, to beat I, those two sides. We had Marty earlier in the year, and he, he wasn't talking finals footy. He recognised they'd lost a lot of players. It was a rebuild. So I think where they have got to has been, like you said, he, he's, his credentials are looking really good. Even after three or four weeks of winning, he still was very optimistic about development and thinks more towards next year. James Batterby's, Battersby is their most experienced player, and he's only 25, 26 now. So they've got a really good group building for the next two or three years. Luke, what is your role? What, what, what do you what what do you what's your uh, what do you do? So I've been uh, been out of the SA NFL games there, covering the games for the Sunday Mail and the Advertiser every weekend. And okay, how long have you been in that job? Uh, basically twelve months. Okay, all right. Yeah, being a foot, got a footy background. I have. I've always played. It was you know been involved in uh, been involved with the, the Crows briefly for a little while, but yeah, mm. have always played. Been been involved with sport, baseball, and cricket and football predominantly. Pretty good gig, mate. Pretty good. It's a lot gig. of fun. It's, I mean, the competition is fantastic. You can. Um, other states, you know, we've seen the VFL with the lockdowns, they haven't been able to play and yeah. to get, you know, to basically get two full seasons away during this pandemic for the yeah. samples being a real tick to the administration and what we've done here in South Australia. I think it's been brilliant what the SNFL have done, to be honest. I think it's amazing that, yeah. it, that anything's been able to continue through the last two seasons. No, no, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, I want to get on to South Adelaide because early in the year they looked like they were the red hot team. Them and Glenelg, everyone was kind of talking about, but the Panthers have dropped off. Probably in the last four or five weeks. They have a little bit. Their injuries have mounted up a little bit. They've had a number of guys, Eamon Wilkinson, and um, have missed uh, guys like that have missed a lot of footy this year. And they've sort of just started to get those guys back. Obviously, it was a disappointing loss to North Adelaide on the weekend. But any team with Bryce Gibbs and Matthew Broadbent and mm. Jason Horn francis who will probably be the number one pick in the draft, is going to be dangerous come September. So, mate, Glenelg have dominated this year. 16 games in, 16 wins. It's been a phenomenal season for them. But if you're looking at it, uh, we are chatting about it before and have a quick chat with you. North look like the team that's rising right now. They, they look like if anyone could beat Glenelg, it's maybe then. I mean, we could say it could be the Eagles, but I reckon it's North. And are North the biggest threat right now to Glenelg? I think so. I think they've probably got the best midfield in the competition. They've got the McGarry medalist, Campbell Coombe. They've got Aaron Young. They've got Harrison Wig. They've got Tom Schwartz, who's been a veteran inside midfielder there for a long time. They're really experienced. They, you know, I think that they've got the right balance in attack and defence. And the yeah. last five or six weeks, they've probably played as good a footy in the competition. Like their percentage is the best in the competition, even better than Glenelg's. And that's probably a tick to the type of footy they've played for most of the season. Well, they're, they're two of the highest scoring sides in the comp. Yep. Both the Glenelg and North Adelaide. They, they, they both are very similar percentage, uh, very similar for and against. So, I'd say North of the. Form. Form. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it's I, weird you know. to say that about Glenelg, but Glenelg are 16 and 0, but 
easily could have lost a couple of games to North uh, to Norwood. They were 40 points down in one game and won. Mm, they kicked 5-18 yeah. Norwood in the other game. Yeah. Uh, the Crows as well, like the Crows <laughs> were in front halfway through the last quarter in that game as well. So Glenelg have been a little bit vulnerable. Um, mm. They probably will finish 18-0 given they finish with Westies and Port Adelaide at Albert and may be the last challenge for the season for them in stopping that perfect record. Mm. Can you get your boys to get up, mate, for the last game Maggie's? of Albert and mate? Can you do anything there? Uh, yeah, we might be. Yeah. Might be. Actually, Just make it a little bit entertaining <laughs> for Luke, mate, so he doesn't have to well, write given, his given article fact, today. You know, it's, <laughs> it's all over. But given the fact that uh, Port's AFL side will probably be at full whack, there will be a few blokes and, and that's playing the thing, in that game. Those AFL sides, we've seen it all year. Like When they've got those AFL-listed players, like when Zach Butters you know, he's coming back from injury and plays, Port generally win. It's the same with the Crows, with Tom Lynch and Matt Crouch. When these guys play, they generally win. And when they're not there and it's yeah. and the next rung down is when we've seen them, you know, falter and teams so, have taken advantage of that. So, really, in that last game, Port mm. could have the, <laughs> the same amount of yep. AFL experienced players as Glenelg. They could have. And yep. the other opportunity is that <laughs> Port could be in Perth quarantining for a final and be running out a bunch of top that's of players thing, as well. Yeah. So. And unfortunately, that's the variable of the competition and the world we live in at the moment. I could get a game, Luke. Yeah. Just about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luke, you get around it a fair bit. What's your feel on the Crows and power being in the SNFL? Because it kind of seems to be divided lines, doesn't it? I think it's... If you're looking at it from a purely football perspective and some of the opportunities it's created, not just for AFL-listed guys as well, but for these other guys coming through, you know, guys that are getting opportunity, like Wayne Wied Wiedemann's lad, Jake's playing for Port Adelaide, and mm -hmm. he might not be getting an opportunity with the quality that's going around at the Eagles and players like that as well. So yeah. in that sense, it's really good. And with the commercial aspect as well, I think with Channel 7, you know, the interest in the competition is always high with those to see how those draft picks are coming through or how those players are coming back from injuries. I mean, and a 10-team competition is always going to be better for, I think, everyone involved, you know, to keep that Port Magpies heritage in the competition in some form. Yeah. But, I, you know, it, everyone's going to have a different view on it. But, I, mean, yeah. I know we're talking about the finals because they're not too far away, but I'll ask you about a couple of clubs that aren't going to make it. West Adelaide this year, new coach comes in, Brad Gotch. How have you seen Westies over the season? Have you seen enough to go, a couple of players, they've shown some improvement there, they're on the move as opposed to just holding on the bottom of the ladder? The last month has been disappointing, but I think it just comes with a little bit of fatigue with some of these younger guys as well. They've blooded a lot of different players. They've brought a lot of different younger guys through into that side. And Brad Gotch is a fantastic coach. He took over South Adelaide in a very similar position a few years ago and got them back up the ladder pretty quickly and then moved on to Collingwood. And He's a very deep thinker about the game. And I think that if he gets that group for two or three years and gets them playing the way that he wants to play, they can bounce up pretty quickly. I mean not that long ago that the Westies were playing in the grand final, so they are sort of rotating through that list and getting players back into it. And they certainly weren't disgraced against Norwood on the weekend. You wouldn't have thought that's a massive loss. What was it, 20-odd points or something? Yeah, and the I mean, Red the goal, the goalless game was probably an aberration on their season more than anything. They've yeah. been in a lot of yeah. games and yeah. fallen away late, and I think that, uh, that they, they are building the right way, and Brad Gotch is doing a good job down there. So what about Norwood, mate? They, they changed coaches this season. Uh, Jared Cotton out. Jade in, have they, are they in the same position? Improved or about the same? It's always difficult, I guess, with teams like that, is that they're so reliant on some of these older guys that have come through. They've got Richard Douglas and Paul Puopolo, who's had a knee injury, so he's missed a little bit of footy. But, I mean, they've played some good footy in patches and they've played some inconsistent footy in patches. They probably have played good periods of footy, but they have lost Jackson Callow earlier in the year to that mid-season draft, and he was one that looked like he was going to win them a few games. And really stamp his mark on the competition and they probably have struggled to find that avenue to goal a few times this That's season. That's a very good point with him because he was a big key Popular. to Norwood. No, the, the, the Callow. Callow, yep. He, he went was to a Hawthorne, real so. key for Norwood. He, he, he played some really good footy before he that draft. Well, Nunny tore his hamstring off the bone too, so that, that hurts yeah. him. And that's it. Yep. And that they've struggled to find ways to kick scores. They've done well to hold teams up, but they haven't been able to yeah. restrict teams in front of goal. Hey, mate, before we let you go, kind of listening to what you're saying and, and the people are talking to you, Glenelg Eagles and North kind of look like it's going to be one of those three or uh, two of those into the grand final. Could you see it being anything different to that? I think you have to throw South Adelaide into that in mix as well. Yep. I think that they've got enough quality in terms of guys like Gibbs and Broadbent and Haynes and Horn Francis that if they get things right, that can be really dangerous, especially in those in the final series. But it does look like those top three teams are a class above, just with the AFL, the ex AFL experience that they've got, and you know, the Eagles have brought in guys like Daniel Menzel, Troy Menzel, uh, Riley Knight as well. So. They've got guys that are playing good footy. And same with North Adelaide, they're starting to peak at the right time. So mm -hmm. 
I mean, even Glenelg, the rich get richer with Lockie Hosey coming back in this yeah. week as well. So, Mate, has there been one ga- one team over the course of the season you've enjoyed watching more than any other? For no other reason, you just like the way they play. I've, selfishly, I've enjoyed watching South Adelaide purely because I like watching Jason Horn, Horn yep. Francis play every week. I mean, he's a fantastic kid, and to see what he's doing against men at that age group already, as you know, as a seventeen-year-old or eighteen-year-old kid. Is just phenomenal to watch him play every week. I think he's you know, yeah, a special yeah. talent and it's just exciting to watch. He'd be a yeah. good player for Port in the AFL, I would reckon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate, really appreciate you coming. You know you're a busy man. Luke's got to run the barbecue in down at Glenelg on really? Jenny Road, mate, so he really's yeah. got time to hang around. So, mate, we're going to have to get you back because uh, you've covered off on it really well. We know exactly the finals right. are around the corner, so we look forward to getting you back, mate. Uh, all good. Thanks, guys. Right. Appreciate you, Luke coming in. Stay with us. Still, a little bit more to come.